Sì, c'è Foligo, Honorable uh, George Sanga. Mine is to first of all address the Zambian people and by extension address the members of Patriotic Front across the nation. Patriotic Front is uh, privileged once more to play a role in Zambia to fight for the restoration of democracy in the Republic of Zambia, which is not only under threat, but clearly by the developments of today, Ms. Aka Indechirema has decided to be an agent to destroy democracy in the Republic of Zambia. Zambia has remained you know, a torchbearer, a pioneer on many fronts, a pioneer historically as one that um, spearheaded the liberation struggle not only for the region but the entire continent. Towards the late 1980s, Zambia once more showed its um, not only leadership but also a privileged position of being ahead of nations within the region to pioneer the reintroduction of multi-party democracy in the region. Unfortunately, over 30 years down the line, we are unfortunate to have a puppet of foreign interest, a dictator, one that has no shame and conscience, taking steps that are clear to all of us to see towards not only destroying our democracy, but destroying all principles, values, and ethics that we have held dear as a country to ensure that, first of all, we are united, two, our governance systems are protected, three, when it comes to the rule of law, it is no compromise. Whether it was under Kaunda, whether it was under Dr. Chiluba, whether it was under Mwanawasa, whether it was under Rupia Banda, Michael Sata, or indeed Edgar Chagwalungu, we may have played politics, but when it comes to the when it came to the rule of law and acknowledging and protecting institutions of governance, it was never, never, never a compromise. Today, members of Patriotic Front, I want to appeal to you, instead of having to be depressed, to be dejected, to be discouraged, rise up and consider what is happening as a great, great call upon all of us to do something for our country. The Zambian people, wherever you are, now you can see clearly that this is not just mere politicking. Misaka in the HLM has a clear agenda against our democracy. He has a clear agenda against the institutions of governance. What has transpired in Patriotic Front, the whole scheme and project from the inception up to today, it has exposed the UPND and Misaka and HRM. It has, by extension, exposed the judiciary. It has exposed Parliament. As Patriotic Front, we are wondering how are Zambians going to go to bed tonight? Are we going to go to bed with a clear conscience and really find sleep with what is happening? Today we can be having Zambians, regardless of their political affiliation, 
accept. Some even praise and celebrate the conduct of the likes of charlatans like Robert Chaving and even tolerate them to exist in our society where all of us, regardless of our political affiliation, aspire to have our democracy not only grow but flourish to a point where it doesn't matter who comes into government which political party comes into government, systems of government should be constant and be able to deliver to the aspiration of the German people. Our brother Mao Sampa, all of us have been watching, observing, and persuading ourselves that he could be correcting himself, that what he participated in was uh, something that is uncalled for. And that realization must be commended by every well-meaning Zambian. But as it were, those who were behind all that illegality and what has transpired have shown their ugly head once more in wanting to sponsor another faction within a faction. The Robert Chabinga scheme was known two, three weeks ago that Misaka in the HLM was not satisfied the fact that even with all his attempts, he has actually been exposed. And he still wants to, wants to proceed to continuously expose himself. And in his desperation to cover himself, even having exposed himself, he's doing further damage to our democracy. In trying to destroy PF, yeah, we are allowing this man to destroy our democracy. <coughs> In 2016, the Zambian people, through the elected representatives of parliament, did express themselves that they didn't want by-elections. Hence, the provisions of the constitution today. It is so tedious that you can never have a by-election just at a whim or indeed reckless decisions of a political party. Where still, when it comes from a sponsored group, as it has now manifested in parliament today. This chair has already expressed, parliament has no right to declare any seat vacant, except on two conditions. One is that when a member of parliament, for example, is purported to be expelled, they must accept that expulsion. All the nine members of parliament have rejected the purported expulsion, as expressed through the uh, you know, uh, process to go to court to challenge that those purported expulsions. Not only at the first instance, even after the constitutional court suggested that they didn't have jurisdiction to deal with the matters that were raised before it. Actions were taken by Friday. Today, parliament should not have closed itself with powers that it doesn't have in relation to the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. But what has happened? We know the meetings that have been held in behind the scenes, where even the one who was pronouncing Moyo, first of all, we all know, Zambians know that that guy is not <coughs> even fit to sit where he's seated. He doesn't have even 10% of the knowledge and competence to be able to you know, execute the duty or responsibilities placed over his shoulders. The ruling just exposes the lack of knowledge. To come and say that we are expelling, we are declaring uh, the seats of nine members of parliament vacant because the one who has written a letter is not a secretary general. How has parliament invited itself to be concerned about the internal affairs of political parties and its constitution? <clears throat> Just a few days ago, the Constitutional Court 
made a ruling that the job of the speaker is to receive correspondence from a political party and act on that correspondence and never invite itself into the internal affairs of a political party. Today, Madame Nelly and Misaka in are exposed. The double standard has been exposed. I'm seated here, Secretary General. We wrote letters way before any action was undertaken by our colleagues that held that illegal 24th of October conference, Ex you know, disciplining them, expelling them. This speaker of today, Neri Muti, with the cahoots, ignored that uh, correspondence and decided to conveniently wait for other processes by the executive so that they can be able to legitimatize what was illegal. As it were, when you play double standard, it's a matter of time you'll be exposed. Today, Mr. Haka in the scheme to destroy our democracy has been exposed. Here, the expulsion of or the declaration of the nine seats vacant exposes Mr. Haka in the He is actually standing wherever he is, pants down. Badana mwa sampuga. Jari ponyanta ngarada kuti. John says jabine jabinga. When people connect from your pronouncement in Kasama, when he says you have to be strong, and all the shenanigans that have been going on, it has only gone to embarrass you as a person and as a president. And with police and desk Today, <coughs> Chabinga was having a press briefing, not today, this night, was having a press briefing under uh, police protection. A battalion of police, more than 50 police officers have been deployed to protect this young boy just for purposes of being a tool in the hands of Mr. Haka in the to advance his agenda. Now, you have proven, Mr. Haka in the that you are not a politician. Because if you are a politician who had even just 10% of Kaunda, even just 5% of Chiruva, even just 2% of Michael Sato, you realize that you are digging your own grave by the actions that you are taking. And we want to salute you. Continue. You may inconvenience individuals, but your, the votes in the hands of the many million Zambians are already tilting and gravitating towards the opposition. For Patriotic Front, this is the time for us to proudly so take up our arsenals, political arsenals, and engage in defending our democracy and defending our party. We salute our brother, Mao Sampa, for his uh, realization and we only hope that during this whole process, he will continue to have the courage to go through and do the right thing. I think for every human being, when you have made a mistake and you decide to realize that there is a way in which I can restitute and you gather the courage to restitute, you are greater than those who may be you know, condemning you or suggesting anything else for you you have an opportunity out of this courage you have exhibited to restitute, to go through and be able to become a hero out of what seemed to have been something that would have destroyed you. Continue to be courageous. We will stand with you and we'll stand with the Zambian people and Patriot Front, wherever you are, don't worry. Everything is in order. Aluta Continua, this man called Mr. Aka Indechrema has dug his grave and you fall in it all we need to do is to help him to fall in it and to bury him ceremoniously in 2026. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? <clears throat> I know it's late. I know it's uh, difficult. But uh, the Secretary General and our Chair for Ligo have delivered. Let me have your question. Who is the 
I want to believe that you are just being a devil's advocate because even where you are, for you to be with us at this hour trying to listen and gather news from what we are saying is because you believe what is going on is nonsensical. The party president is Ediga Chagwalongo. President, uh, uh, I mean, uh, our good brother, uh, Mao Sampa, and uh, the legalities around what he pronounced on himself is a matter that will be exhausted in court. But I want to believe, as Secretary General, just like my colleagues, that the hints so far expressed have indicated that he acknowledged that he may have miscalculated at some point, but I think it is important to acknowledge that there's a leadership in place. Everybody will be guided. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have activities, some of which will involve members of parliament, some of which will involve the president. And we also believe that our brother, wherever he is in national duties, he will be able to contribute to this process. It's a process that will culminate into collective effort to resolve not only matters of patriotic front, <coughs> but also resolve matters that will be able to help us defend the democracy that is under threat under the you know, project and orchestrations or schemes of Misaka and HLM. I noticed, Chair, you wanted to contribute. Yes, just just put the microphone to yourself, that one. Thank yeah, you. thank you. I was no, just, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I was just going to add that all these things you are seeing being orchestrated by the other side of the divide is because of the immense fear that is coming over them because PF is just about to realign its leadership. It's because people have realized mistakes were made, but it's also because the whole patriotic front has rallied behind the legitimate president of the party, Dr. Edgar Chagolungu, and because those whom it is concerning are trying by all means to ensure that they frustrate these efforts. That's why I'm seeing what is going on here. It is very easy to know who the president is. It is very easy to know where we're going in taking this direction forward. Yes, yes, Keith. Yes, my question goes to the Secretary General. Honorable, you mentioned earlier to say Honorable Mao Sampa, since he has realized of what a sort he had caused to the party, the party is ready to dialogue with him. But as a Patriot Front, which is the largest party, according to the numbers in the National Assembly, and for our democratic tenets calls for proper checks and balances, and to have a very strong opposition, as a party, what do you think has um, the party been in this array? Have you done justice to the democracy as an opposition uh, to, to our country? And also, how, are you, as a party, are you going to navigate through these legal um, you know, matters that you have engulfed yourself in, in ensuring that the party is intact and you go past through this phase? First of all, your comment towards the end is misplaced. We haven't engulfed ourselves in anything. There has just been an attempt by the UPND to try and destabilize patriotic front. And that attempt, even when they are ex, you know, clearly exposed, they have no shame. Misaka and the HLM are like they say in Bemba, Varishe Tensoni. Mujitonga Tombauti. Muntu Chitananga to Amba Uti Na Uri Buenye Tredeguti to Yandauren Miru Gari Rang Kambo at every juncture Uradi Sampura Mudwa Awa Wasampura Waga Sampuga Magana JJ Kambo Uti Bamuch to abduct three to aga to agabu high court Bamuch to abduct in Bani Sunu, which the sponsor Chavinga out our press briefing Bani. Chavinga today has not only police at his house or at his press briefing, they have also directed Zesco to go and put a substation at his house so that he can have power throughout for security reasons when you are being roasted more than twenty hours. What what kind of desperation is this? Like the chair said is a desperation emanating from fear. 
We have not as PF looked after ourselves in anything. For your own information, PF is intact. The same way of seeing <clears throat> members of parliament remain united, resolute to stand and remain loyal to the leadership is the same thing that is happening across the country. It is that which is worrying Misaka and HLM. All these, uh, uh, you know, attempts and press briefings, calling themselves president and all that, is just a joke. That's why we're asking, how is the Chief Justice going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? How is Neri going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? How are the Zambian people going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? Are we going to even have a comfortable sleep with our conscience clear that in our society, we should be able to tolerate and allow misfits of that nature exist and even grace the court when we all know before even they come that this is uncalled for. This treasonous act should never be tolerated by any patriotic Zambian, regardless of where you are. This is a rhythmic test against us politicians. This is a, a, an indictment against the, the judiciary. It's an indictment against the parliament. Parliament has already failed through that moil. Now it's up to the judiciary. Now it's up to the court of public opinion, the Zambian people, whether they can tolerate this kind of nonsense. And this, Jim, sure. let me oh. add something. That, oh, that Robert Chavinga, for the second time, has kept on threatening the media, uh, threatening you that um, you'll be reported to the police. He caught, today he caught himself a chief liquidator because he thinks he liquidated the post when he was just a chola boy for Lewis Mosho, who was the liquidator. Mm. Today he said he was going to liquidate the media, you members of the media, and that he would report you to the police. I'm so shocked that this is, I think, the second or third time he's issuing these threats. And media associations are very quiet. Law associations are very quiet. We should never tolerate threats against the media. You are the mirror for society. You are professionals. And like Honorable uh, Nakachinda said, how have we allowed misfits like that issue threats to the media? Maybe you can issue threats to Emmanuel Mwamba or to Nakachinda. We are fellow politicians. Never to the media. I and I hope that the police will move in and arrest that Chavinga. This is the second time he's issuing those very strong threats against the media. I just thought I could help you on that. May I also Chair. just add, uh, very briefly, um, because I think the question is, is on how are we going to navigate these legal cases as a patriotic front. I, I think, like uh, SG has said, you are directing the question to the wrong party. That question must be directed to the courts you must begin to ask questions. Are these courts prepared to give the patriotic front justice? Mm. Our responsibility as aggrieved citizens would be to take matters before the courts of law with the highest of expectations that we have got impeccable men of morality in the judiciary who see the cases for what they are and make decisions in that court. From the time of the 24th of October 2023, when Mao Sampa had that retreat, they're calling it convention, I still call it a retreat. Even a child at kindergarten knew that what happened there was wrong. But because constitutionally, <coughs> we have vested these powers to make those declarations in the courts, we decided to take these matters to court. The last cases that you've seen, there are actually three of them. Courts have vacillated on these matters. They've never brought themselves to deal with the merits of the case. The Even the when the Constitution demands of the courts to make sure that they address themselves to the merits of the case. Now, look, the moral right to adjudicate on matters rises and falls with the character of somebody who sits in court as a judge. With what we have gone through up to now, this is when you can hear an individual like Chavinga calling the judiciary video assistance referee. He calls him Va. Mm. He says of Michael, of, 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 of Sampa, oh, you have expelled me. We are going to check with VAR. On matters of national leadership, 
Mm. You reduce it to a tirade of suggesting to the nation that to you, the court is a video assistant referee. And everybody agrees. Legal matters are resolved by the courts. The responsibility of the patriotic front, like any other party who would be aggrieved, would be to take these matters to court. But under what I called a very painful presumption that we're going to find objective, independent, and accountable judges who will look at the interest of the whole nation. These are public interest cases. These kinds of cases inform public policy on how you're going to handle the affairs of political leadership in the country. But if you're going to continue <clears throat> dancing around these cases and dealing only on what are called preliminary issues and throwing the cases out of court without guiding the parties, you will have a problem. So this question was directed to the SG, but I think the wrong party. The SG is doing what is right. He has two options. Either to summon members of the patriotic front to rise and rev on a revolt and defend its leadership or defend its party by doing anything or by any means necessary, using Malcolm X's language, to ensure that you protect the party. Option number one. Option number two, to be respecters of the law and due process. On the understanding that we are being managed under a constitutional democracy and refer the matters to court and sit back under the expectation that those who draw money from the public purse, the judges, those who we gave the responsibility, because remember, judicial authority is vested in the people. We just surrendered that to the judges. And when it comes to constitutional matters, we surrendered it to that number of judges, which is not even more than 15. They are the ones who are supposed to be telling us what is constitutional and what is not. And they must strive to ensure that they don't bring about you know, rule by the might, but rule by what is right. That's why I argued that I expect them to be accountable, to be independent, to be objective, and most importantly, to understand the importance of their duties. Judges, I have argued before, are not employees. They are not even civil servants. Judges are sovereign institutions. They discharge a sovereign function because under our constitutional democracy, Sovereignty is distributed in three ways. The president is a sovereign. Me, even if I look very small in your eyes, because the people of Lukasha voted for me, they constituted me as a sovereign in parliament. Mm. And me, sitting with Brian Mondovide, Stephen Campiongo, Cornelius Simuitwa, Jack Mwimbu, and any other elected member of parliament in that house, we discharge a sovereign function called legislature. The judges are in fact the most important in the three connections because the judges check us. They check the executive, they check us. In that way, we distribute sovereign power in three institutions. But you see, because in this country, under the UPND, we don't even know what sovereignty means. <clears throat> that is why this government can go and commit amounts of more than $280 billion to do a road from Lusaka to Ndola without bringing it to parliament. They can bring in somebody to come and invest in our mines in, in Mopani without bringing it to parliament, even when the constitution demands that they must bring it to the next sovereign who has a responsibility to check their conduct executive and recommend whether such a deal can go ahead or not. But because for them, they've suspended the constitution, they've suspended the rule of law, they've suspended democracy, and they're entrenching it very quickly with an oligarchy that comprises a ruling class which is supposed to be followed by everybody else. But like the SGR said, the Patriotic Front has options. Okay? We are here to stay. And our intention is to be part of the political process in the nation. And we're not doing it because we are permitted by the president to do it. No. We are doing it because the Constitution constitutes us as sovereigns. We are accountable to people who, have, who, who voted for us, and we must be allowed to discharge that function without any interference from anybody. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we yeah, can take you. The last one. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, get it on record if uh, there is uh, an official reconciliation with Mr. Nelson, but what does the party make of uh, the pronouncement he's made uh, to uh, Parliament, rather in Parliament, uh, with uh, some changes that he announced, those changes um, which uh, uh, the MPC announced and appointed uh, 
accepted those appointments? What is your take on that? For now, I think the focus that we have as a party is to deal with what is even more critical and important, the, the assault and destruction on our democracy through Misaka in, you know, by Misaka in the, through parliament and an attempt to get the judiciary to cooperate with him. As I speak with you, I'm fidgeting with the phone because some of the messages that we are giving here to try and assure our members, the members are calling and we're cutting the lines. Messages are flowing. Ms. ISG, that's not the, the message we want to hear. We want a message of um, command because we are ready. I want to say to the Zambian people and everybody concerned, this is the last time we are going to be calling you to come down because we still have some degree of confidence in the judiciary. Beyond this, we will not be able to hold you. You will have to exercise your powers. Kenya has demonstrated and other jurisdictions have demonstrated that power lies with the people. We acknowledge that we have held you for many, many months, years now, from taking action outside the institutions that seem to be letting you down. As your leaders, we have kept the faith that these institutions will wake up to reality and be able to do the right thing. Beyond today, I don't think I will have the courage to come and call you to order and wait on those institutions. Sorry that we have to address you tonight to prevent you from taking the action you are proposing to take. But we think that it's necessary to give chance to everybody to do the right thing. Beyond this, as the Secretary General of Patriotic Front, unfortunately, I may not have the courage to be able to carry this same message. But for now, bear with us. The chairman for LIGO is here. The chairman for information is here. Our dear MCC is here. We are pleading with you. We think that Zambia has always corrected itself. Zambia corrected itself in 1990. Zambia corrected itself in 2001. We think Zambia will correct itself today. We plead with you. There's no need to go the Kenyan way. There's no need to go any other way but to give chance to institutions of government to do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've come to close of the press conference, emergency press conference by the Secretary General. Uh, tomorrow morning, I think we'll confirm with time, the members of parliament that are affected by the decisions that were taken today, accompanied by Chair Rigo, We'll be holding a press conference. I think we'll put out a notice. And uh, I think President Ed Galungu is also expected to speak maybe much later in the day. Again, we'll let you know. Um, uh, it's our duty now just to end the press conference and thank you, especially you, the media, that came at short notice. God bless you. God bless our country. And shalom, shalom.